stats and stats presented by scoutthestatline.com. Brian, as always, here I am. And Padre, Ross R. Jensen. Guys, for us, and we're like, we're four months ahead of everybody else. Let's be honest. It's ranking season. It's ranking season, Ross. You know what we got tonight? I do. Well, I know you know what we got tonight, <laughs> but like, guys, do you know what we got tonight? We got catchers. We got the top 10 catchers presented by scoutthestatline.com coming at you tonight. Before that, Ross, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hey, everybody. There we go. Okay. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, let's get the other thing out of the way. Beers. Let's talk about some beers. You got a beer? I got it. You you want to do your beer first? Or you want me to go first? Well, you go ahead, please. Okay. Honors. So, I got a beer that is from Portland, Oregon. It's Widmer Brothers Brewing Brewing, and this is a uh, American Hefeweizen. Uh, let's get the little synopsis going on here. Brewed in the family since 1984. We were born then. No. Uh, in 1984, Kurt and Rob Widmer quit their jobs to follow a lifelong passion of making great beer that could be shared with friends and family. From the very uh, very first pitcher, the Widmer brothers sought to make beer that's easy to something, I don't know, the, the cardboard's cut off, and perfect for sipping on the back porch or where, wherever life takes you. A lot has changed since then, but the truth that that started it is all that remains. Great beer brings people together. Prost. I don't know what prost means. Prost. But it's a, it's like a, it's like a cheers. Like toast? Prost. Yeah, it, it's German. Okay. I'm not German. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Hefeweizen was first brewed, the Widmer brothers knew that they had something very special on their hands. From the floral notes of citrus to the natural cloudy body and ref refreshing finish, Hef was unlike anything they'd ever tasted before. What they didn't know was that this golden yet cloudy brew would become an international staple of craft brewing and forever known as America's original Hefeweizen. That's pretty interesting. So this might be a little bit of a, like, everybody's laughing at me. Like, you've never had that before? Sorry. You've never <laughs> had it before? I don't think so. Wait, and, and what's the brewery called again? Widmer. W-I-D-M-E-R oh. Bros. I am shocked that you've never had that. I Maybe I have. i just seen it and grabbed it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's, Let's it. try it. Pretty pretty cool little bottle. You know, it had nothing special. Widmer Bros Hef. <laughs> let's see if it's got it. Let's see if it cracks the seal. Oh yeah. So there's the, there's this guy that's on um TikTok. And uh I think he's like the leather Irishman or something like that. And he drinks beers. Man, that guy's hilarious. And he calls um, alcohol content horsepower. So it's like, this is an 11.7% horsepower. And he's, I, I think he's Irish. Yeah, he, he's funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. Looks like a, looks like a half. Sure enough. It's going to be good. Did you get yourself like a, a lemon or an orange little little oh, no. I don't drown things um like you do. I want the real flavors to come through. That's great. It's great beer. Yeah. I don't have everything that the little note said on there. Citrus. Yeah, that's that's a great beer. You know what it reminds me? You remember when we used to go down to the brew pub? Yeah. And have their white tail wheats? Yeah. That's exactly how that tastes. Yeah. A good That's time. a great beer. <laughs> good times. Yeah. Good times. Good times, great oldies. What do you got, bud? All right. 
my turn. <laughs> I've got uh, a beer from Firestone Walker, which I think I've done on the show before. This one's called Bramblin' on My Mind. Uh, it describes itself as an American wild ale with Marion berries, which is interesting. Um, 6.2% alcohol by volume, ABB. Uh, what can I say about Firestone Walker? They're from California. I just read a little about us synopsis on them, and apparently they were started on the back end of some vineyard. So they, they have wine roots, which was kind of interesting, but they decided, oh, yeah. a couple brothers decided that they wanted to brew beer. So let me read what it says here about Bramblin' on my mind. Bramblin' on my mind is an ode to our original Barrel Works Fruited Wild Ale, Slow Ambic. First produced in 2009 using a little-known local blackberry called the Ol Olali Berry, only 240 gallons of Slow Ambic were released, and it became an instant classic. Over the years, we have recreated this beer using different blackberry variants and magnified its character with more and more fruit. Ramblin' on my mind is a unique interpretation of the original idea. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to skip ahead. Um... <laughs> Ramblin' on my mind summons an unmistakable jammy bouquet, that of a freshly picked blackberry basket right on your table, followed by rich and opulent berry flavors and subtle oak tannins. This beer will be on your mind from beginning to end. Okay, now let's see if that's indeed the case, if I can get this thing opened up. <laughs> let's check out the pour. I did not expect that. Up, 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 up. There we go. It's red. Wow. Yeah, very berry. And I, I could taste that a little bit when it blew up on me. Um, so it's I like it. And I did not expect that to be the case when I bought this beer because the description on the front was wild ale. But I guess I, I shouldn't be too surprised. Marion Berry's um, probably going to dominate the flavor. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it, it's like, it's fruity, but it's not overpowering. I was kind of worried it might be a little overwhelming on the fruits and sweetness but it's not really um you definitely can taste that woven throughout but it's stronger i think i'm gonna really enjoy this one actually i i think i would like that beer I, i'm a wine guy and uh, that reminded me of wine it does kind of have a little bit of a wine yeah. bite to it. i don't know yeah it's interesting i i like it it's a winner recommend it we're never going to fail you guys. Come on. Yeah. I just wish I had. Yeah, you, you, you don't think that we had 12 of these before we got on air? Come on. <laughs> Ooh, I've never had this before. 12 deep, pal. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing, guys. This really was my first one. <laughs> so what do we got? Uh, what do we got on the agenda today, Brian? We have. Top 10 catchers for scoutthestatline.com. Now, I, I do want to preface this just a little bit that these are not me and Ross's rankings. These are I have a, a separate ranking for my catchers. Ross has got a separate uh, ranking for his catchers. These are completely from scoutthestatline.com. As we get into this, I think my catchers might have to change a little bit because there are three names. I don't even know who, who they were. I, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I don't even know who they were. I knew the names, but like it, they weren't touching my top ten. It's As I look at them. List. I mean, and, and we shouldn't be surprised by that because it was a surprising. We, we always have a surprising top tens on these yeah. last year, going back to last year. But nonetheless, these are Scout the Stat Lines top 10. But we're going to give you our opinions about them. Because that's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Bad. We're, it, 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 it's not like we're just going to sit here and just read off stats. We're going to 
we're going to dive into these guys. If you were with us last year uh, for rankings, these can um, get fun, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, we're going to ramble because that's what we do. We, you know, we, we get our teeth sunk into something and we're going to start, uh, we're going to start talking. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a great time. We got catchers, fellas. We got catchers, ladies and gentlemen, we have catchers last year. I'm going to be a little bit more open about this compared to, uh, last year. I think we had a lot more athleticism last year because we do, we, we did have some crazy guys in there. Um, from last year that were stealing bags. We're going to have it here too, but uh, they were in the upper minors, a lot of stolen bases, a lot of home runs, a lot of more well-known names compared to what we got this year. Might be a little bit um, because of graduations, um, might be a little bit because we've tweaked what has happened within the formula at scalpastatline.com. My apologies. Um, I do. You want to touch on the tweaks that could have made this affect the top tens? Well, we did. We did roll out upgrades. Yep. Later on in the season, and that definitely had a big impact. One of the things that I think is made a little unique about this is DSL stats are not included. Um, and, and there is one player in particular that I'm I'm noting that for because I don't know that he'd be in our top 10 if that was the case. Um, it's a surprising list. And I want to start out by saying apologies to a few guys because there's mm -hmm. some guys on here you're going to expect to hear about that are not going to be listed. And I want to mention them right off the bat. Jefferson Cuero, he's not on here. He's not a big WRC plus guy and our rankings are based on heavily based on WRC plus. So that's a, that's a big impact to him. Diego Cartaya. He had a rough year. Uh, that one's maybe Still not, my guy, maybe not as surprising, but it was a very rough season. Ben Rice had a very good year, but a less sure track record to go along with it. Nathan Hickey. He was in our top 10 last year. He didn't make it this year. And a big one, Harry Ford. Yep. Now, some other people out there, rankers, have him as their number one catcher. And he's not even in the top 10 here. He's your number one overall? I agree with him. You guys are nuts. But uh, he's not even in the top 10 here. I, I do, in my personal rankings, he's in the top 10. He's probably my fourth or fifth, fourth maybe, um, but doesn't make the top 10 here. We're going to have yeah. some interesting names coming at you. Yeah, I, and I want to circle back to that just a little bit. I, I believe Harry Ford is my number one catcher. Um, yeah, I, I really like Harry Ford. I, and we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about him tonight, so I'm gonna say it now. Harry Ford's awesome. Yeah, I, the only reason that I don't agree with that is just because I think there's a couple out there that are really good, and I I don't see how he goes above them. But we'll get to those guys because they are on here. One, three, and four. I can understand who you're talking about. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. I know who you have there. Um, before we get into that. We're right before Halloween. Um, a little bit of a news update. I've dyed my hair. Typically, I am pretty gray. I, I, I'm pretty gray. And I've dyed my hair. I am going to be Tom Selleck, Magnum P.I. for Halloween. So the mustache, the hair, I'll curl it up. Um, yeah, going to do some Magnum P.I. action for Halloween. Ross, what was your costume going to be again? Oh, I'm going with a Yellowstone theme this year i'm going to dress up as rip from yellowstone it's you know cowboy i'm going to dress up as a cowboy but it's going to have a yellowstone slant to it i think it'll turn out pretty good makes sense uh we're from yellowstone county so uh i, I get it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay without further ado guys top 10 catchers for the top or for the 2024 season Presented to you 
by scoutthestatline.com. Here we go. And I love the first one here. This is, this is one of my faves. Um, Kyle Teal. Kyle Teal. He is a age 21. He was born February 15th, 2002. Ridgewood, New Jersey. He was selected in the draft of 2023 by the Boston Red Sox. Round one. Overall pick 14 out of Virginia. Kyle Teal, six foot one, one ninety. All Kyle Teal, Teal did this season, um, very very small sample size, uh, and this is the minor league stats. I'm sure Ross will be able to jump into the college stats for us uh, just a little bit, but um, in three different levels, which this is great. This is good stuff. This tells us that the the team believes in him. I believe in them. Rookie, A plus league, and double A ball. We had 91 at bats. He batted 363 with an on base percentage of 482, slugged 495, OPS plus, uh, on base percentage plus slugging is 977, two home runs, three stolen bases. He only struck out 22 times. He walked 21 times. He had six doubles. Everything was right there in front of him. Once again, small sample size, but I love Kyle Teal. What do you got on the college side, buddy? Uh, so I'll, I'll walk through first his, his college yeah. stats. I got a lot to share on this guy too. Yeah. So he went to Virginia in the ACC. As a freshman, he hit 335 with a 416 OBP and a 526 slugging percentage. Pretty good freshman season. Nine home runs that year. He followed that up with a, a a little bit of a down season as a sophomore. He only hit 276, only slugged 439, uh, but he did walk more than he struck out. So big improvement with his plate discipline that year, kind of hidden in there, despite his his numbers kind of lagging a little bit. And then as a junior, he had a fantastic season he kind of blended his his skill sets that he showed off in those first two seasons and then advanced it uh overall he slashed 407 475 655 with 13 home runs so really good really good junior year and that culminated in him getting selected by the red Sox with the 14th overall pick since he's turned pro i mean he's He's just been a hit machine. And yeah. one one thing about Kyle Teal that I think is really notable, especially notable, is he's a really good defensive catcher too. Like really good. So he's gonna make he's gonna get playing time because of that. Um and I think he's gonna make an impact. It looks like his bat is really strong. He doesn't have a ton of power, but I think that he's probably got a little bit more power than Scout the stat line is seeing. I think it's just too small of a sample size to really get to to read into it too much. Um, but overall, he only hit two home runs and 114 plate appearances. However, he slashed 363 with a 483 OBP and a 495 slugging percentage. Huge numbers. Huge no. numbers from a ratio perspective uh 22 walks and 20 21 walks and 22 strikeouts yeah does he have a comp on scout the stat line he's got a hall of fame comp with scout the stat line of roberto clemente oh that's sad that's <laughs> that's just unfortunate so and and this is where i'm saying they're seeing him being more of a a, a spray hitter type of player I think he's got a little bit more power than that. I think he'll develop a little bit differently than a guy like Roberto Clemente. But right now, they give him an 80 grade for his hit tool and just a 35 for power and basically no speed. So let's throw that out there. That's going to be most of these catchers are going to be – all these catchers are going to be basically no speed guys. Yeah. But really nice peak projections where he's projected to hit over 300 and and we're looking at no regression. They're more interesting to me. So 306 batting average, 404 OBP, and then just a 397 slugging percentage. 
I think he's going to slug a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Maybe hit slightly less, but I don't expect him to. He's he's going to have a really strong bat. Yeah. And uh, you guys can kill me in the comments if, if you want to. But because um, I, I don't follow every major league's depth chart as far as um, who they have in front of them and stuff like that. But Kyle Teal, I don't think he's got a blocker in front of him. I think he can progress very quickly uh, through the Red, Red Sox organization, and he could be playing as soon as 2025 in the Red Sox organization, in my opinion. Um, I, I can't think of anybody above him. Can you, Ross? I think he's got a pretty clear shot once, yeah. he's, once he's ready. And yeah. SDS agrees with you. They give him an ETA of 2025, so – Cool, cool. And I, I could get blown up in the comments section on that because I, I'm not 100% sure, especially with catchers, you know, outfielders, first baseman, second baseman, uh, all, all your fielders. I, I have a pretty good idea. Catcher position is a little bit tougher, especially with the blocking. But you mentioned um, that he's a really good framer and just a good defensive catcher. So, you know, that, that's only going to speed him up a little bit more. Kyle Teal, guys, that, is he a go get him, Ross? I think he's a go get him. I think this is oh, yeah. this is somebody you're not going to build your team around, but this is somebody that's yeah. going to be a huge help for your team. So, not I love like, it. Some of the guys, some of the guys at the top of the list are guys you could possibly build a team around. I, I'm not calling out with Kyle Teal, but this is a really good player that can help you out. Yeah. Well, we're 91 at bats. So yes, he's a first round draft pick. Maybe a lot of people know him, but. Um... You know, people don't get excited about catcher catchers. Um, I I think he's a go get him, and it shouldn't cost you a whole lot. It, it's going to cost you a little bit, but it's not going to cost you a lot. Go get Kyle Teal. Agree. All right. Oh, we're going to speed through this because I feel good tonight. I feel good tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Number nine, and number nine is going to be a nudist. Mordon and Anudis Mordon is with a single A affiliate with the Baltimore Orioles. Once again, the Baltimore Orioles are stacked. He's a 19 year old. He came out of the Dominican Republic and he has 128 at bats. Um, the majority of those are sitting in the DSL rookie league. Um, in 2021 and 2022, but in 2023 he came stateside. It, he, he came stateside for we'll call it a cup of coffee. It was an ele- it, it was eleven at bats, but you know it, that that's pretty exciting that he came stateside because we know he's here. Um, all right, and I apologize on the at bats that I mentioned earlier. He's three hundred and fifty two at bats in his minor league career, uh, but this season. Let's let's jump into the season overall. He has 128 at bats in 2023. He has 36 hits, 27 RBIs, two stolen bases. The average was 281 with an on base percentage of 392. On base plus slugging was 915. Once again, we always talk about that nine mark. Anything above nine, we really want to start opening our eyes. Um, I don't have a lot on this guy. Was this a surprise for you, Ross? Huge surprise. Yep. I, I think I'm intrigued by a couple things on here. First of all, the numbers are really good yeah. overall across rookie level and single A. He's just, just 19. Still a young guy. I mean, barely 19 even. Like, yeah. played most of the season, barely 19. 281 batting average, 392 on base percentage, 523 slugging. I mean, and he mashed. Granted, it was only 12 plate appearances at single A. That's pretty that's pretty nice. And you have to wonder if the Orioles are kind of pulling off some magic that, you know, they just have great hitting coaches or what it is. But the flip side of that is this is the guy I kind of alluded to. If we had his DSL numbers calculated in here, I don't think he'd be in the top 10 because his track record is questionable at best. 
it's it's not very good in the DSL across two seasons he's a 205 hitter with only a 263 slugging percentage that's not very good so a surprise and you know we're talking about 17 18 year old at the time and maybe maybe he's physically developed maybe the hitting coaches have helped him unlock his true potential but this is one that I'm I'm kind of tossing up the red flag about and saying I don't think this is somebody you you should be going after right now. I think this is somebody you want to want to watch and see how he starts out next season. And if he is starting out pretty hot, then you know, then you start getting interested. That's the way that I'm going to get a new Yeah, no, I and I agree. And I said this last year. Um I'm patting myself on the back because the the Diamondbacks are in the World Series, but I I, I mentioned this um, a lot off season that I really liked the way that the Diamondbacks were running their organization. Um, they they were right next to um, I said the Guardians, I said the Guardians and the Diamondbacks were the best organizations as far as minor league systems um, in my opinion last year. I think the Orioles are have, have climbed up with those three. Um, love what the Orioles are doing. Really excited for them. So I don't want to – no, I do want to say that I think it's a big deal that they pulled him stateside, even with a pretty piss-poor track record the two years prior. He did decent this year in the rookie level, and then they bumped him up to to the A the A League. I think that's a big um, slap on the back from the Ori- Orioles organization for Anudis to say, hey, "Hey, maybe this is a guy that we need to look at a little bit further." They're really queuing in on his power potential. Okay, at scout the stat line, he's coming in with a seventy five grade scout grade equivalency for power which is extreme projecting for huge power numbers um but again it's only based on 153 plate appearances so it, yeah it's it's a little soon to make too much of this i think he I agree. Comp to luke voigt by the way so there's another another example of that power shining through well it probably makes sense why we don't like him then because he's Equivalent to Luke Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, I, you know, keep an eye. Uh, I, we, I always said um, Hawkeye. Keep your your Hawkeye on this guy. See what he does on stateside. You know, if he, he if he blows up, maybe there's something there. Uh, but yeah, the, for me, this is not a go get him. Um, it's not even a. Uh, buy low or anything like this this is just to keep watch yeah we had uh jesus i think it was rodriguez last year um and he was kind of the i i see as the equivalent to this gentleman here and i don't think he had a remarkable follow-up season this year so i think we were right on the money on that last year and i think we're looking at the same thing here okay Cool. Number eight. Number eight, guys. This is one that I'm pretty excited about. Pretty excited. Him and Kyle Teal. Um, This next gentleman is going to be Nick Schwartz. Nick Schwartz is with the rookie affiliate with the Oakland A's. Soon to be the Las Vegas A's. I I don't know how that's working. Do you have any insight on that? Yeah, <laughs> they're moving. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, Nick Schwartz, uh, 5'11", 190 pounds. He's 22 years old. Uh, he was born in Beth Page, New York. He went to college in southern New Hampshire, signed as a free agent. He's only got 23 at-bats. So let's, let, let, let's pump the brakes. But what's very, very interesting about this, 23 at-bats, right, guys? 17 of them came at the rookie level. 
he batted 588 with a 667 on base percentage, one home run. They instantly sent him to Triple A. And he got six at bats at Triple A. And he batted two uh one night uh 167 with a 286 on base percentage. Like I want I want to beat this home as hard as I can. I like Nick Schwartz because I I, I seen the iPod the the small sample size, but the eye popping numbers, but then seeing the 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 at bats at the rookie level, and then all of a sudden he's in triple A. Like something's going on. We don't know what it is, but it's gotta be awesome. The minor league systems the, the minor league system in general this year is so different than it was in twenty twenty two. And we we've seen so many players getting pushed super aggressively, like we've never seen before. Um, and and they're incentivized to to push these guys a little sooner. That's that's the best I can gather. Nick Schwartz, I think, kind of looks like a potential gem picked oh. out by the A's. And I think the A's have been doing some sneaky, sneaky good deals i don't know it it does seem like they're doing some interesting stuff to me and it's kind of getting overlooked by a lot of a lot of people because i think it started i think it started last year yeah well their team is in such rough shape that people are overlooking them at this point but i do feel like they've got some interesting little signings like this one i mean he was a masher at southern new hampshire and he was mashing in the minor leagues granted mostly it was at the rookie level and he's 22 is he still 22 he's still 22 yeah you won't turn 23 till march 7 so i mean it's it's notable and they saw something here to to sign him and i think this guy is probably appropriate to be as a top 10 guy but huge caveat here is we're basing all of this on just 29 plate appearances so the the error bars are like extremely wide on both sides you know for what this guy could be we we just don't know yet not until we see some more but i'm intrigued i am too i am too uh the thing the thing that we're doing tonight um, is completely based off stats. And that, that's what Scout the Stat Line is all about anyways. is it, It's all about the stats. Nothing else matters besides the stats. Once again, that's what fantasy baseball is. It's all about the stats. We don't care that you can frame a pitch. We don't care that you can run to first base in... 4.2 seconds, whatever it is. We don't care. Well, we Can do to see some it? extent. I mean, in as far as it impacts playing time and yeah, it, like that. it, they're, they're that's what it, I, I, I was getting there. I, I, I was getting there. It, it, obviously, you need to have these things, otherwise, you're not going to play. Um, but there's something to be said from jumping from rookie ball to triple A. There's yep. something to be said there. That's a big, huge jump and an, another thing that's interesting is how that impacts his his ranking and his his projections at scout the stat line one of the one of the changes that we made with the modeling was we weaved in uh to enhance age level factoring probability of making the major leagues which is what level and what at what age did they achieve getting at a certain level of the minor leagues? Because that makes them X percent more probable of being a successful major leaguer. Well, that impacts a guy like Nick Schwartz pretty dramatically because it's a different story if we're just looking at his stats at rookie level, right? But he gets bumped up to triple A and granted his performance there wasn't out of this world by any means, but that probability all of a sudden increases 
by you know exponentially that he's going to be in the major leagues so that does impact his his ranking on here and without that we might not be looking at a top 10 catcher on this system but because of that new adjustment he's here and yeah. he's only got 29 plate appearances the old system we wouldn't even look at him unless they had 200 so you know so th- there are a couple things that are different that allows Nick Schwartz to sneak in there does he have a comp, Ross? He does. He gets a pretty good comp to Adrian Gonzalez. Ooh. It's a good one. Padres fans season. unite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that, it, it, to me, and I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. To me, I'm going to say go get him. I'm going to say go get him because that's not going to cost you anything. But I think you need to go get him before we see something crazy happen. I'm going to give a half-hearted endorsement to him. Yeah. Like I I don't blame you. I'd probably be wanting to watch get a little more of a sample built in there before I get too excited. Because again, I I don't really know what we're dealing with yet. But he did come out of the gate super hot. The track record in college looks good at a small school. Um I I do think the A's have been doing interesting things. So like the fact that he's with them is to me a positive because that means they saw something in him. Um, So yeah, I'm going to give like a half hearted. Yeah. I'd wait a little bit before I get too excited, but I'm going to cost you anything. I'm not opposed to, I'm not opposed to to going after him either. It should cost you $0 to get this guy. If somebody owns him, you're gonna to have to give up something, right? They're just not gonna give them up for yeah, for free. If know. you drop him, I'll give you. Uh, you can pick up my free agent that I'm gonna drop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Nick Schwartz. Yeah, Nick Schwartz. I I'm very intrigued to watch that next season. Okay, moving on to number seven. We did seven. Yes, sir. Number seven, and I would I would guess everybody listening, um, even Ross and myself, are probably going to say he should probably be a little bit higher. Edgar, Edgar, Cuero, Edgar Cuero, with the double A affiliate with the white uh, Chicago White Sox. He's five foot 11, 170 pounds, 20 years old. He was born in San Fuego, Cuba. And what he did, it, we, we touched on him last year. Uh, it, we, we were pretty big fans on him last year, but what he did this year, uh, two different affiliates, uh, two different sides uh, of the spectrum in double A. He got traded in the, uh, during the year, 256 at bats at one place, 122 or 112 at another. Uh, so 368 at bats. He batted 255, had a 380 on base, and slugged 351. That brings us to an on base plus slugging of 731. He had six home runs, a far cry from his 17 last year. Um, 76 strikeouts, 72 walks. So that was sexy. Um, Edgar Cuero had a, a good year, not the breakout that we certainly expected at Scout the Stat Line, but he certainly didn't disappoint. Edgar Cuero, what do you think, Ross? Yeah, so one of our top 10 catchers from last year, and this is a yep. guy we'd, we'd ID pretty early on, and I think, you know, we always love the guys that we ID early and we, we want a champion and we want them to be successful, obviously. So I remember really queuing in on him in 2021 when he was first making his debut. And then in 2022, had a really strong season across the board. I was really excited for him. Starting 2023, the Angels gave him a very aggressive assignment and they put him in double A. That surprised even me. I was I was surprised by that. I thought he would be at high A to start the season. Um, they 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 went a little aggressive. The Angels did that a lot this year, 
with a lot of different players. And it looks to me like it was maybe premature. He didn't do he didn't do bad, but yeah. he wasn't able to impact the ball like he has in the past. He had excellent plate discipline. In fact, with the Angels, he walked more than he struck out. Uh, eventually, he went from Angels prospect killing organization to the White Sox prospect killing organization. So <laughs> he, he went there and his numbers were better after moving to the White Sox across the board, uh, except for an on-base percentage. Yep. But he was he was hitting a little bit better overall. I think that they probably had him work on being a little more aggressive, see if he could make make more contact. But overall, it's a it's a decent season. It's just not the season that I think we'd hoped for, and I think he f- has fallen a little bit in the rankings as a result of that. Still ranks pretty well for us overall. He's a wrc plus kind of performing bat with really good plate discipline um i'm still excited i just think the move was a little premature to double a yeah and i would not be surprised if next year we see him repeat the level to start the year and if he's and if he's shown the growth that i would expect because i thought by maybe next year he would be in double a then we might we might actually see more of the the query we were expecting this year. Yeah, I, I think you, you you hit the nail on the head. Uh, but I think I'm a little bit more excited than you are. I can kind of hear the tone in your voice um, that it's kind of a ho hum sort of deal. Um, I'm pretty impressed by a. I mean, he was 19 years old. Uh, he, he, he was 20. He, he was 20 all year. He was 20 years old in double A. And he held his own. Yeah. I, he, didn't, it, he didn't struggle. I, I don't want to call it struggling. Like, he just held his own. He did a really good job by the stats comparison. I think you should get excited about that. Yeah, he batted 312 last year in A. Got the call up to the double A numbers, which I am the huge guy on the double A numbers. I think those are easily translated into the MLB. He batted 246 uh, with his first affiliate and then 277 with his second. I love that. I, I think that looks really good, especially at the catcher spot. Well, you know, he only struck out 76 times. That's yeah. pretty he's he's got great play discipline. He clearly yeah. does. So I'm I'm still looking for the breakout. I, I really yeah. am. I'm, I'm not off of this guy by any means. But I have cooled a little bit. I was if he yeah. would have blown it up this year, then you know, I would have been his biggest cheerleader. Just being a little realistic, it was you know, you, you want to see a little bit more. And I think he was just aggressively promoted. Yeah. He didn't miss it it's not like he mishandled that assignment though. No. So you could still see, I mean, if he has a big breakout next year, even if he started in, in double A and let's say he's performing like he did in 2022 at double A, then he's going to be in triple A before you know and probably see the major leagues. And he's still just 21 years old. So so yep. there's still a lot of promise there. Super excited about this one, guys. Um, I would say for me, this is a great buy low. If you're having a, an owner that was like, well, I was super excited about him. He just didn't perform. Man, go get him. Matter of fact, yeah, I, he's a go get him for me. I agree with you. Great buy low opportunity right here. Yeah, yeah. Edgar Cuero, guys. That's Chai Sox. You don't see too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right our number six catcher on our list is detroit tigers joshua brasino joshua brasino is from marique venezuela he's 19 years old he's a big boy he's six foot four 200 pounds 
I mean, I, I don't have a crazy amount to say about him. Um, last year, he batted 234 in 145 at bats. This year, came stateside, batted 319 in a 210 at bats, had seven home runs. Struck out 36 times, walked 30 times, on base percentage of 402, slugged 529. There's that on base plus slugging way above 900. It's 931. Um, I don't have a lot to say. And it, the only reason I don't have a lot to say is I think um, I'm blinded by what's ahead of him in the Tigers organization. And this is my fault that I didn't kind of. Um, scout Jasu. Everything here looks really, really good. What do you got on Jasu? This is kind of like, or Hossway. I'm sorry. This is kind of like our number nine Anudis Mordan in a, in a sense, right? Like he he played some time in the DSL. Numbers there were not great. And then he's bumped up this year to rookie and, and single A level. Numbers are yeah. very good. Yeah. I think the difference I see here is this one's a little meatier. There's more to there's more to dig into here and more to get excited about, I think, than a nudist more done. So I see an 18-year-old that had pretty productive numbers across the yeah. board at the rookie level. Well, he slugged 550 there too. Seven home runs, 325, 404, 550, triple slash. And then promoted aggressively to single A. Numbers are down a little bit comparatively, but still excellent plate discipline. I think there's I think there's something here to be excited about. So Hosway Briseño, I'm I'm thinking is is possibly somebody you want to you, you definitely want to keep an eye on more so yeah. than Mordon and potentially pick him up if you're in a pretty deep league you know chance to yeah. get really i think this is this is the moment i'm excited about this one a little bit more. Yeah. the thing that really excites me i think on the slugging percentage um so obviously you pointed out that he slugged 550 at rookie level, but he had seven home runs and 13 doubles in 169 at bats. He kept that slugging percentage up there, even at coming into to a ball with no home runs. Yeah. So he was still, he was still impacting the ball. Like really well. He's doing all this with excellent play discipline. And I yeah. think that's, that's notable to me. And this is a pretty big guy. We're talking about now 19, but 6'4", 200 pounds. It's a big, big kid. Yeah, and that started the year. So he probably gained another 20 pounds already. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be so honest. Could He could end up being a masher yeah. down the road. And, and a masher that's not striking out at a high clip. So that's notable. So yeah, I'm a little more I'm I'm a little more excited about Hosway Briseño. Yeah. I, I I always get into that conversation um when we when I know the farm system, when I know what is in front of them. Um but I always talk about blockers. You know, who's who, who's their blocker? Who who who's going to you know keep them from coming into the majors? Dylan Dingler, it, it, you know, instantly comes to mind with the Tigers. Dingler had a great second half. Yeah, yeah, he did. He really did. Yeah. 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 So that one of those things that pops into my brain. Um, my opinion on this is Josue Brasino is keeping a, a Hawkeye on him. Because it, 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 I think you could get excited about this. This is a good profile. There, there's nothing to dislike there. Yeah, 100% agreed across the board. A little more endorsement here, it sounds like, than our number nine on this list. Correct.
even though All right. similarities between the two. Did he have a comp? Yes, he gets Omar Narvaez. Catcher with the White Sox. Okay. So nothing to think, point I out. Got, I think we got a little more offensive upside potential with this guy, though. Yeah. I'm seeing something that I, I think is pretty – I mean, the potential is there anyway. Yeah, yeah. So already we're in the top five, top five catchers for scout stat line. And each one of the, these guys, I would hope you've all heard of. If you haven't heard all of uh, these top five guys, open your ears because these are all go get ems In my opinion, Ross might have something to say about this gentleman right here. Number five is Dalton Rushing. Dalton Rushing is a catcher for the high A affiliate for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He is 22 years old. He was drafted in the second round, picked 40 overall out of Louisville. He did have a rough year. Um, it wasn't what we were expecting of Dalton Rushing, but his 2023 numbers look as 290 at bats. 15 home runs. His average was 228 on base percentage of 404, slugged 452 with a on base plus slugging five, or 856. Uh, he struck out 93 times, walked 72 times, 18 doubles. I am an owner of Dalton Rushing. I am a huge fan. I believe in the Midas touch by the Dodgers with their prospects. I'm a huge, huge Rushings fan. Like, this is a go get him, but he did have an uh, an average this year that was not up to par. Still had the power numbers. Still had the power numbers. Still walked at a good percentage. Struck out a little too much. Um, I love this guy. I love him. Well, he's got a great name, Dalton. It's a, it's a, it's a really good start. Rushing Roundhouse, too, but Dalton yeah. Roundhouse the face. Yep. And he's got massive hamstrings. Always got to mention that when we're talking about Dalton rushing. This guy's legs are tree trunks. Um, he came into the season kind of a stat stat line scouting sort of darling, you know, because yeah. he had a really impressive debut and. I would take a different stance than you. You said he had a bad year. I don't think he had a bad year. His batting average was did not end up being very good. Uh, but 410 OBP, 481 slugging percentage. He was hitting for power. He was getting on base. Those are good things. What is interesting to me is the splits with Dalton rushing. And I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm missing some of the story in here, but he had a pretty poor finish actually had a really strong September which kind of stands out but July and August for him were just abominable you look at July and he only hit 179 granted he walked more than he struck out so there was some promise in there but then in August he only hit 125 no power basically in those months or very limited power I I wonder if there was something else going on if he was playing hurt or what it might have been um but those two months basically killed his his stat line for the season cuz he he was looking pretty solid up until that point and that really tanked him in the rankings for scout the stat line too so he still ranks pretty highly 25 overall they they love his on base capabilities and that does look very strong um but the poor finish is just it opens up a lot of questions for me. Yeah. My mind's been made up for it, it, it's been a year. This is a go get him for me. Um, and I'll take my lumps on that. He, I, I think he's got power for days uh, and he, he's got one heck of a, a plate discipline, uh, in my opinion. Maybe a little bit of go ahead and swing the bat, pal. I, I I can see, you know, just in the numbers, 72 walks, 93 strikeouts. He's getting pitches that he could drive. 
go get it. Yeah. He's got a lot of power. Um, yeah. I, I do like the plate discipline. The strikeouts are maybe a little high, but like he walks so much that it's it's yeah. not an issue. Um I would I would probably touch on a topic that you usually cover, and that's blockers. You know, yeah. the Dodgers currently have one of the best catchers in the league, Will Smith, and still somehow underrated. So yeah. that's just the start. And they got all this other talent at the same position too. And some guys that we're even going to cover later on tonight. So, so he's got a lot of competition. That's going to be a challenge. We might not be looking at a catcher at this point. If, if he wants to see it, the field, he might not be a catcher. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, I don't care how good he is. He just might not see the field as a catcher. Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 you can start talking about other teams, and then, and then we go way off the rails. But yeah, so, I, for me, Dalton Rushing is a go get him. He has been for two years. This one, I'm. I, I want to see a little bit more. I guess yeah. I, I, he would. He would have been more in that quadrant for me at the beginning of the season, and now I'm. I'm questioning it a little bit more. He gets sure. off to to Mitch Garver, who's a really good catcher with some pretty good power, and he has a 55 for his hit tool, thanks to those great on base capabilities, and 65 for power. So there's some promise there. Projecting four twenty nine home runs per six hundred play appearances. For sure. All right, we're in the we're in the top five. So here we go. We, we are in number four. Number four is Moises Bellesteros, and he is in the Double A affiliate for the Chicago Cubs. He's five foot seven, one hundred ninety five pounds. He's only nineteen years old, and he is from Los. Tequess, Venezuela. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I apologize. Uh, this year, I'm just going to touch on this year's stats because I believe we touched on him last offseason as well. He had 421 at-bats this year. His average was 285, on-base percentage of 374, slugged 449, on-base plus slugging 823, 14 home runs, 27 doubles. 78 strikeouts and 63 walks. He has basically shown us that we were correct about what he was doing last year. He just implemented that just a little bit more. He did touch double A this year, had 21 at bats, only about a 283 there. But once again, you know, five, five hits and 21 at bats. We're not going to talk too much about that, but he did bat 300 at high A. Super excited for uh, Ballast, Ballesteros. Very excited to talk about Ballesteros. Yep, I, I agree with your assessment pretty much across the board. One thing I would say about Ballesteros is that there's it, this seems like a safe profile to me. Yeah, like there's very little chance that this guy doesn't find some kind of success. Mm -hmm. whether he is a star at the next level is what i would question mm -hmm. uh, because i'm not seeing star caliber data right now but i am seeing really solid productive stats and he's only 19 years old and he was promoted all the way to double a late in the season and that was a surprise to most people so you're you're talking about a teenager, still 19, uh, that you know is getting to the higher levels of the minor leagues already, and that's pretty interesting. So the Cubs got to be excited about that. I mean, he's going to hit for some decent average. He's got pretty good plate discipline. He's got some power. Yeah, really solid all around player, I think. But whether he's going to you know, be able to pierce that next level of like stardom level. That's the question that I have. Sure. I don't see that right now, but he does look pretty good. What does he have a comp for on, uh, on the scouts, scout the staff line? All right. Well, you let me know if you know this guy, because I do not. Gus Triandos. 
No. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> well, it does not. Maybe we should talk a little bit about Gus Triandos. Let's find out about him. All right. Gus Triandos was with the Baltimore Orioles, it looks like, for the majority of his career. Played for, bounced around to a couple other teams, collected 14 wins above, above replacement throughout his career. Just a very solid all-around player. He's also a catcher, so it's fitting. He had a 30 home run season back in 1958. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, look at looking back on this, it looks like a, a fairly decent comp for what I'm seeing. Okay. I would like to ask how does he match up to play Alejandro Kirk? How would I compare the two? How, yeah, how do they match up? Are you you're looking for my personal take on that? Yeah, uh, yeah, as far as minor leagues are concerned. Um, well, Ballesteros has really good age level data, um, but Kirk was a much better hitter overall. Did he have a lot more power? Kirk? Yeah. No, no. Kirk was all about... He didn't. Uh, no, he had excellent plate discipline. I mean, we're talking about a guy that walked almost twice as much as he struck out when he was in the minor leagues. Really good good bat i would say yeah i mean I, to me it, it, his bat seems like when he was coming up a level above ballesteros okay. what i'm seeing from ballesteros right now okay but ballesteros is also a little more advanced and he's still just 19 I, kirk was not in double a by that time i don't okay. believe Okay. I, I, for some reason, I had that caught in my head that Alejandro Kirk and Ballesteros were very similar. Well, okay. So, yeah. Kirk didn't, he, he never even played in double A. <laughs> That's pretty wild. So he was 20 and he was in single A and high A um, and just an excellent bat. 56 walks, 39 strikeouts that season. And then he okay. and then COVID hit, so he missed a, an entire entire year in the minor leagues and then he played in AAA in 2021. So he went straight to AAA, he skipped Double A. And he was a hitting machine until they promoted him. I'm going to stick to that. I I think that's a good comp. I see a little more a little more power in Ballesteros than Kirk showed early on, but less bat. That's how I okay. would characterize it. Less bat, less OBP. Okay. So is Ballesteros a go-getter? So I think he's going to be a, a solid player. I don't think he's going to be a great player right now. So whether he's a go-getter or not is – you have to frame this in from a value perspective. The guys that we're going to talk about above him, especially two of these three guys, are going to come at extreme valuations, right? And if you don't want to pay those prices, this might be the guy that you want to take a deeper look at because he's not going to hurt your team. He could help you a little bit. Uh, he's going to come at a fraction of the cost. I would say that this is the guy – to target if you've missed at least two of these three guys, uh, maybe all three of them. Uh, one of the guys on here might also be one of those guys you want to target too. So, I, I, I actually completely agree with you, and I would like to link Ballesteros to Andrew Vaughn that's in the majors right now. Like, if if you miss out on all the first basemen that are going in the first five rounds, Andrew Vaughn's the guy that you need to go get. Agreed. Yep. Does that need to make a little bit of sense? Yeah. How I'm putting that together? I could see that. I can see that completely. Yeah. Okay. Next up, number three. We're already in top three, guys. Number three is Ethan Salas. 
Ethan Salas is with the double A affiliate with the San Diego Padres. He's six foot, 285 pounds. He is only 17 years old. And he was uh, born in Kissimmee, Florida. <laughs> Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, and he's brothers to Jose Salas. And what Ethan Salas has done for the Padres in 254 at bats with three different teams in 2023. From single A all the way to double A is a 248 average, 300, uh, 331 on base percentage, 421 slugging with a 752 on base plus slugging, nine home runs, 13 doubles, two triples, five stolen bases, 75 strikeouts to 30 walks. I'm a huge fan of Ethan Solace. Um, the numbers, don't dictate exactly what I'm trying to say, but I think Ethan Solace is a freaking superstar. Well, I think you kind of have to throw out his high A and, and double A numbers altogether if you want to kind of get an idea yeah. of the type of hitter he is. There's some things that I want to point out with Ethan Solace. Like came in with insane pedigree, right? Insane pedigree. And he got to play in spring training this year. And he was holding his own for, a, he was 16 at the time. He was 16 years old. I want to emphasize that. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Again, he, won't, league, against he won't be league. eight. He won't be 18 until the start of next year. Uh, we're talking about. So this guy's a 17 year old and, and doing yeah. some pretty incredible age level stuff, but he's a young 17. And I want to emphasize that too. Already very well developed for a, a kid that's 17 years old. Geez, I was like 140 pounds or something at that time. You know, <laughs> tiny. So he, he's he's very well developed both as a professional and physically um, at, a, at an early age, and really doing some things that we haven't seen for a long, long time as far as advancements. Now. The Padres might might have pushed him too aggressively at the end of the season. They promoted him to high A, and then they boosted him right up to double A. So he got about 60 plate appearances there. That really kind of tanked his overall line. But when he was at single A, he hit 267 with a 350 OBP and a 487 slugging percentage. And I think that that's kind of the line that you could look at and extrapolate to professional um I guess, production. I You could almost take that and be like, okay, when this kid is growing up, that's like the, that's the baseline. Because you don't often see a 17-year-old at single A to begin with, right? Like that's unusual, a young 17 especially. And he performed very strongly. Pushed up aggressively, numbers came down. The overall line at the end of the season doesn't look as impressive, only a 752 OPS. But the the age level factoring here is off the charts. And that's why he's a top 10 prospect by Baseball America. That's why he's my number one, my personal number one catching prospect. I have him higher than the next two guys, though I think there's at least one of them it's pretty debatable with. But I've said this a few times we haven't seen this kind of advancement since Alex Rodriguez next year. I mean, he could be 18 years old and knocking on the door to the major leagues. He might get a cup of coffee at 18. Yeah, he won't be, he won't be 18 till June 1st. I could be wrong on this, but I think Alex Rodriguez is the last player to debut as an 18 year old yeah i can't confirm or deny that so i'm just throwing that out there at least i don't know of anyone else if anyone does please leave a comment and let me know because i'd be interested in looking into that but yeah i mean i, I do worry about blockers with the padres um but Camposano's playing really well for them which is kind yeah, of interesting. yeah that and the Padres do some interesting things with trading and shuffling um, random players. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a big veteran 
come into the Padres next year at catcher. Uh, but he's got an athletic build. You know, he's six foot two, 185 pounds. He's sleek, um, for lack of a better word. He doesn't have to play catcher. Yeah, a couple things that I would say about that is is one, if the bat is as good as it looks like it is, they probably don't want to keep him at catcher. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he seems like a really good candidate to get moved off the position. I don't know what his position would be. Maybe the outfield, maybe left field or something like that. Yeah. Um, but they're they're gonna want to get him playing every day, I would think. If he's carrying the stick that it looks like he's got, um very likely we see him off of that position. And even so, let's say he doesn't change positions. I think he's just talented enough that they will make room for him. Yep. So he'll find a spot. That's my take. Yeah. I, I think we're both on board on this one. Ethan Solace says, go get him. Go get him. Go get yep. him. But he's not going to be cheap. I mean, this guy is not cheap anymore. No, most, most places, a lot of places are regarding him as a top 10 prospect. You're going to have to pay top 10 prospect prices. So, yeah, yep. but an easy, but he's somebody. You want it, to if you wanted to talk an owner off the ledge, just look at his stats and be like, you know, it was only 248. I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. He's so overrated. Mm-hmm. Trade him to me. Uh. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ethan Solace. All right, our next one, and I think this is going to come as a, a surprise. It was a surprise to me. Um, our number two catcher at Stout, ScoutTheStatLine.com is Theron Lorenzo. Theron Lorenzo is a catcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's six foot three, 195 pounds. I think they didn't measure him correctly because he's a monster. I think he's six six and all of two hundred and forty pounds. I'm not gonna lie to you, he's huge. But they they run throughout this year in 2023. He was at the single A affiliate with the Dodgers, 345 at bats. He averaged 272 on base percentage of 400, slugged 562 on base plus slugging 962 with. 24 home runs, fellas. Um, two stolen bases. His walks to strikeout. He had 70 uh, 70 walks, 112 strikeouts. Way too freaking high. But, man, he's impacting the ball. He's hitting the shit out of that ball. He had 24 doubles as well. Yeah. Um, te- te- is it Tehran? Tehran, I think. Tehran, Lorenzo, whatever it is. Uh, Lorenzo is looking. Power is the calling card. And Scout the Stat Line is saying you need to pay attention to that power. It's not the only thing. The on base capabilities are very intriguing. You're right that strikeout rate maybe teeters on on the edge of being high. Scary. But he walks a lot. And yeah, he's they're projecting him for some of the best power in the minor leagues right now. So that's the interesting thing with Lorenzo is they're saying this guy is a power bat and they give him a scout grade equivalency of 75 for power. Have you seen some photos of this guy running around the field? He's not 6'3. No, I can't say I have. (laughs) I'm 6'3. This guy would be four inches taller than me. <laughs> some of the some of the best projections, I think, at Scout the Stat Line. This one's a huge surprise. I don't think that there's any way that he's better than Ethan Salas. The profile doesn't look quite as strong to me overall either. But you can't deny the power, and it's the Dodgers yep. again. You know. Yep. There's going to be issues with playing time, as there usually is with it. Uh, Dodgers prospects it seems like he did all of this at 19 he just turned 20 so he'll be 20 all of next year probably in double a 
Yeah, I, I'm gonna guess that he starts out in high A, and yeah. maybe if he's still hitting the crap out of the ball, gets a promotion up to double A. Oh, it, it's tough too with all their other promotions. I mean, they're gonna have to find a spot for him to be able to move up because they do have more catchers, more outfielders, more infielders that it, it, the Midas touch of the Dodgers. They, they just got a great farm and they they know how to push the right buttons. Yeah, it's a crazy one. Yep. But this is one of those guys, so we were just talking about this with Ballesteros. If you can't get Ethan Salas, if you can't afford him, if you can't get this next guy we're going to talk about, who would be my number one target, priority target, if you can't, based on value and expected production, then Lorenzo is a pretty good avenue, I think. You know, oh maybe, yeah, maybe a toss up between Lorenzo and Ballesteros, who I'd who I'd want to target in that scenario, where it's like I can't get these other two guys. You know, who who am I going to look at adding? Well, this one's kind of sneaky. He doesn't have a lot of pedigree, not a lot of top one hundred billing out there, so could be the way to go. That that's an interesting question. Yeah, I'd like to present that to you. Who would you rather go? Would you rather do Ballesteros or Lorenzo? I think Ballesteros is the safer looking profile to me. I'd probably go that direction, though I, I do think it's fairly close, and Lorenzo is probably the upside play. Uh, and so that's where I'm sitting, especially with. Um, the older outlook of the catcher position, trying to get those cheap stats um, with the power numbers. Give me, give me Lorenzo with the cheap power stats at the catcher position. A lot of risk there. I, I think yep. more risk in, in his profile. If if you were to tell me, and it's not, it's not a risk aversion that makes me say this, but if you were to say like, pick one of those two guys, I'm going Ballesteros because I just think, it's more likely he finds major league success. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I I really do. I do. All right. I can't okay. believe we did it already. Yeah, it, that was quick. We got through this way too quick. Maybe we should do first baseman tonight too. <laughs> Just teasing. First place as our catcher position for scout stat line. And I, I don't know if you could really argue this i think it would be fine if um you had him as your number one catcher i have a, a different one we talked about harry ford earlier um but samuel Vasala once again with the orioles the orioles are loaded guys okay the the orioles are absolutely loaded but samuel Vasala with a double-A affiliate with the Orioles. He's 19 years old, um, and he's a young 19. Like, he just turned 19 August 13th. So he played the whole season at 18 years old. He's out of Santo Domingo, uh, Dominican Republic. And he had a couple of rookie uh, in 2021 DSL, 2022 DSL. I had about... 300 at bats there, but this year he had 419 at bats stateside, starting with single A, and he moved all the way up to double A. His stats over the season 419 at bats, 313 average with a 402 on base per percentage and a 551 slugging. That's on base plus slugging of a 953. That's 20 home runs, 26 doubles seven triples and 12 stolen bases. There's not a whole lot that you can grab the old ice pick and start plugging holes in this one. Pretty tough. Pretty tough. So if you're watching this player eval, pause it right now and go watch my, my episode of the next big thing on Samuel Basayo instead, because it's probably going to, cover everything that we're going to talk about right here i'm just going to rehash the same stuff and it's going to have a little video footage in it too but let me just start out by saying this perhaps slamuel is 
underrated by pretty much every organization out there. Because of a guy like Ethan Salas, they just think Ethan, Ethan Salas is the bee's knees, but Samuel Basayo has the productive numbers. Let me shoot out some interesting factoids about Basayo that makes me really, really hot on this guy. And I would make him my number one target in the catching position. Target as in, I think that this guy's value, future value, and where he's ranked currently by most major publications, there's a mismatch. I have him as a top 20 prospect overall. So I'm I'm really high on this guy. But he moved up starting at single A up to double A, as you mentioned, and his numbers actually improved every jump up. And that's insane. You don't get that too often. Uh, and I will I, I will have you know that he was the MVP of the Carolina League that he started at, where he actually performed better in the in his subsequent promotion. So Really exciting stuff there. From a numbers perspective, the numbers are incredible, right? Across the board, I don't think stolen bases is going to factor into his future production very much. Uh, but, I mean, he hits, impacts the ball, he hits with power, he gets on base, pretty good play discipline. As you said, not a whole lot to chip at when it comes to Basayo. I think he's a I think he's a guy you want to go get. Go get him right now. Turn this off and go get Samuel Basai. The elephant in the room on this one would be where in the hell are you going to put him in the Orioles, <laughs> Orioles at organization? Oh, he's not. He ain't playing catcher. catcher. Yeah. And, and <laughs> reportedly, he has a really good arm. And yeah. He's a pretty good defensive catcher. So they're they're going to have to find some use of that. Could be first base, could be in the outfield. I think he's got he's shown enough athleticism to to play in the outfield. They're so, loaded in the outfield. They are. I mean, it's going to be tough. <laughs> first base might be a might be a destination that, for him. Yeah, Mountcastle. I I, I know Mountcastle's yeah. numbers aren't insane or anything like that, but they're you know, that's pretty goddamn good first baseman. They're going to have to find a spot. For it, it's tough. It, it, that's the only thing I'm saying is it's tough. Um, one other interesting tidbit about Samuel Basayo is it's not just scout the stat line. I, I, I need to highlight this. He ranks as the number two overall hitter. So that's how high they, they view him. Because of the age level of factoring, because of the fact that he just smashed it as he moved higher, um, he was even number one for a while. Cam and Arrow like recaptured that on the last day or something like that. So Basaya was really like on a rocket ship, straight to the moon, as you like to say. Past the moon, not, straight to Mars. It's not just scout the stat line, right? So, so he's awesome. One of the leaderboards, one of the leaderboards that we have at Scout the Stat Line is the formulated consensus. I've talked about this a lot. That's a partnership with um, pitcher digs bags leaderboard with pars list with prospect larceny formulated rankings all these other formulated ranking systems that are out there and you know who the number one prospect on that list is samuel beside it's not just scout the stat line he ranks high according to every formulated system out there because he's 18 and he's smashing it so you have to be aware of this guy and you want to go get him. He's a priority at. Now, we, I can't get him in our league because the owner is not going to move him at any price. But in most leagues, there's a mismatch. Perceived value versus real value. Go get him. Go get him. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's all I got to say um, about that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a go get him. I, I just, it, once again, I, I question where he's going to play. But who gives a shit, right? It's one of those things, who cares? They'll find you got to get that bat in your lineup. Yeah, they'll find a spot for it. You know, it, it, uh, and you you mentioned his name. Um, 
you near Cam Caminero, where you put him? Who cares? <laughs> You're going to have to put him in the lineup. We're going to talk about him very, very soon. Um, but that's what we got, guys. We gave you beers. We gave you 10 great prospects at the catch catcher's position. Um, I think we could probably do another video on catchers that uh, we thought should have made the top 10 list. This is just um, by the model at scoutstatline.com. Once again, this is not our personal opinions. Um, it's pretty close, I, I think. I, I would add maybe two, maybe three. Yeah, I would, uh, I, I you know, I'd rearrange a few of them. There's a couple guys I would drop off. There's a couple guys I would add in, but it's yeah. not extreme. No. You know, um, it's it's kind of interesting. You say it's these aren't our opinions. It's like the whole video is our opinions about these guys. that We didn't formulate the opinion or the, the ranking opinion, I guess. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It, Top top five would be pretty hard to argue. I, you could I drop it. That. I, I mean, yeah, Lorenzo, yeah. I, I I have Salas number one. I have Basayo number two. Who do I have number three? I might have Kyle Teal number three. You got to have Harry Ford in there. Harry Ford's up there. Lorenzo, that, that's probably my, or Ballesteros maybe, and then Lorenzo. I got Car I, I got Cartier up there still. Yeah. I mean, well, go check out go check out Twitter X whatever we're calling it these days because my top ten is listed on there. You can go find it. It's it's out there for the public. Last it, out there. <laughs> we we mentioned this last year too. <clears throat> Once again, I, I want to bring last year up. The catcher position used to be a bore. Yep. And I think we did this I did, probably three years ago, maybe four years ago, um, just kind of kidding around, you know, trying to rank where where they were. We might have done it for our hometown league, but it was a bore. Like, it was just like, eh, hey, who cares? Like, you threw your catchers in there. No big deal. And now it's like, you got to, hey, this is legit. Catchers no are. More. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and obviously you have the Harry uh, Harry Davis is going into the outfield or um you know that, that was the big one that popped into my my brain um we got these the guys are going to move Salas. off the position yeah, yeah. Uh, rushing maybe i mean we got a lot of guys yeah. on here that we're presuming are going to move off the position. Yeah, I, I was just talking about in recent years, you know, a, a really high ranking profile that moved off the position. Harry, Harry Davis was the big one that popped into my head. But um, and it, a lot of these guys are going to do it because their bats are so good that they don't want to be, you know, the organization doesn't want to be sitting behind the plate. So um, when you go get one of these guys, start thinking that maybe it's going to be a first base or, you know, it's going to be an outfield. A lot of these guys don't go to third, which I'm kind of surprised about. It must be an agility thing. Yeah, I would imagine so. I mean, usually it seems like first base or outfield is a destination. Yeah. Um, yeah. First base. <laughs> yeah. Common. Which, uh, I mean, let, let's get realistic. If, if, if Rutschman's bat is so crazy good and Basalo is that good a catcher? Who knows? Maybe Rutschman goes to first. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm, he's a great framer and he's probably the best catcher in the league, but the, who knows? The rumor they did it with Posey. is that he, he, his game calling is, is top yeah. notch. And, you know, there's so many other things that he does that. They did it with Posey. And, yeah, that's true. It's true. Rutschman's still pretty young though. So was Posey at the time. <laughs> All right. Let's let's lock <laughs> this thing up and have another beer. Fine. <laughs> Statliners, it was nice seeing you. I'm gonna crack another beer. Um sit here and talk with my buddy Ross. We'll argue a little bit more off air. Super happy to see you guys. If you have anything. Um, to put down in the comments that section, please do it. I know 
I can mess up here and there. Go ahead and throw shade at me. It's great. Um, <laughs> really happy to be here with you guys. And I hope to do it again. Well, we're going to do it again next week. We're, we're going to bring you a first base next Tuesday. Yep, I think that's the plan. First base next Tuesday. See you guys. Thank you.